Hi, it's Rachel here again. I've been prompted to make this video after watching a recording from the 2018 convention that um, a Smurf girl, Apostates Anonymous, recorded uh, when she actually attended the convention. And the talk was about uh, doubt versus faith. And it, it kind of stood out to me. Um, I'll, I'll just read Hebrews 12 verse 1, which is pretty much what the brother discussed. Uh, it says here, I'll just read the second part. Let us also throw off every weight and the sin that easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, so... All the years that I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, this the sin that easily entangles us was always identified as a lack of faith. But in this talk that the brother gave, he actually said that that sin was doubt. Which there is a, a difference between doubt and a lack of faith. So I wondered if this was a, a new a new light on the understanding of this verse. Um, so I'll just I've got on my tablet the um, some of the recording, and I'll just play. I'll just show you that a little bit. What he says, and notice how he he's referring to doubt as the ball and chain for a, for a runner, a runner in a race. That doubt would be like a ball and chain. Um, and he calls it sin. So, okay. You can hear the brother there refer to the sin that easily entangles you and then can trip you up on your race for life as doubt. Um, which is kind of, it reminds me a little bit of a video that I saw on, um, uh, was Thinker of Thoughts. Uh, video channel, <clears throat> YouTube channel, uh, he's a former Mormon and uh, I'll, I'll actually link to it in, in the description below the video um, where he records one of their um, brothers, elders, talking about doubt and, and demonising doubt and they use all the same kind of um, tactics as Jehovah's Witnesses to stop you from doubting the, the organisation or doubting the leadership. <coughs> it's exactly the same. But anyway, um, getting back to Witnesses, many years ago when I was having some, some doubts uh, that I actually went to the elders with, and I remember some of the things that I mentioned was um, why we called the truth the truth, you know, when it changed, how could it have been uh, the truth if it was changed to something else? So, you know, um, and also I felt that when in conversation we used the words the truth, it, it implied that that everyone else believes in a lie. Uh, I found that to, you know, quite offensive to those who aren't witnesses yet who were still very sincere. Bible believing, truth seeking Christians, in my opinion. Um, another thing was the blood doctrine. I brought that up that I didn't really agree with the reasoning behind the prohibition on whole blood. And um, yeah, 
they were the two top things. Uh, yeah, and that I didn't agree with with the idea that only Jehovah's Witnesses would be saved at Armageddon. So I had these doubts, and I was really struggling with them, and my conscience was really suffering, and the brothers, the elders, one in particular, really tried to help me. And he came and came and this was like oh maybe eighteen months to two years before I actually um, wrote to elders and said I'd be been stumbled by the governing body, and very quickly led to my being disfellowship. But so a few you know a couple of years before that, and the brother came around and he brought some reading material, some copies he made, and one of them was an article. Uh, from the watchtower, I have it on jw.org here, and it was from the 2001 July 1st uh, watchtower, and the article was called Do Not Let Doubts Destroy Your Faith, and he highlighted the point that not all doubt is bad, there's a subheading here in the article, it says doubt, is it always bad? I'll just read you a few a few bits from here. Because remember the brother in that talk said doubt is a sin and he didn't sort of elaborate, he just left it fairly general, you know, like doubt is a sin. Of course, not all doubt is bad. At times you need to suspend acceptance of something till you are sure of the facts. Religious exhortations to the effect that you should just believe and should doubt nothing are dangerous and deceptive. True, the Bible says that love believes all things. A loving Christian is certainly ready to believe those who have proved trustworthy in the past. But God's word also warns against putting faith in every word. Sometimes a person's past record gives legitimate, legitimate reason for doubt. Although the deceptive talker makes his voice gracious, the Bible warns do not believe in him. So really... Um, when we look at the past track record of um, the truth, has it really proven trustworthy? Not really when it changes and major doctrines are changed, um, or doctrines that actually involve people's lives, you know, like the blood doctrine, for example.